Gorgos Cull's army had started to gather at the gates of Fair Farig. The city's defences were small, and the inexperienced Stormhost needed time to gather their forces. With little time to spare, Vandis gathered his personal guard and headed towards the city's gates, to desperately bide some time for the coastal knights. Hey everybody, Sponge Murphy here and welcome to the first video in the series called The Battle at Fair Farig, which this is going to be a narrative build. So not only am I going to be building and painting up a bunch of models for this series, I'm going to be creating my own lore to go with them as well. So you've seen a little snippet at the start of this video. If you want to get a bigger picture of what's going on, make sure to check out the previous video I put out before. I put a link to that here somewhere. And yeah, this is the first model for the whole build. This is Van der Hammerhand. This is the guy that Cull is after. So hopefully you enjoyed this paint tutorial and let me know what you think in the comment section below. So to start off with the skin of the Dracot, I wanted a dark blue so I started with Cantor blue and as dark as this is you really have to do about two to three thin layers to really get it to fill up with proper colour. And then what seemed like a natural accomplice to it, I went to Dracon off Nightshade, I've only used this paint only a handful, or this shade only a handful of times, um, but it worked really well on top of the Cantor blue. And then I went with a dry brush of Temple Guard blue. Uh, really really lightly over kind of the most prominent parts of the skin and the scales to really get them to stick out now you want really want to get as much temple guard blue off that brush as you can uh, before you start applying it on because it's very very high contrast paint compared to the dark blue and uh, moving on to the mouth then my fist on red was chosen for like kind of like the inside of the mouth and the size parts as well you want to make sure to get the inside and the tongue as well and uh, once that was dry I moved on to evil sun scarlet which is a really nice um, uh, highlight paint to go with my fist on red and then of course I went to a real yellow for the kind of the little dot part of the eye that was done with the previous colors as well and um, to make that kind of eye stick out a little bit more so then I moved on to the armor and this is of course for uh, Vandis as well uh, Retributor armor is the chosen color for the hammers of Sigma are pretty much and um, you can't beat it and um, you go with that now because you can cover as much as the model as you need to and then you can you don't have to worry about tidying up too much after it and um, and then what I've started using recently was Reikland Flesh Shed over that it doesn't darken the armor too much it kind of puts this kind of light kind of sheen to it that I really like if that makes sense it doesn't darken the recesses too much um, and then I started what I've started to do a lot more recently now is um, layering up Liberator Gold on top of that um, not as much as the highlight but just layering up more prominent parts and um, to really get that armor to stick out and to shine a little bit more so then I moved on to the armor parts and the robe of Van der Sammerhand uh, with Cantor blue again I really didn't want to go to another lighter blue I wanted the, the blues to kind of seem to stick to the same kind of type of color so that was the armor parts and the back of his robe and then Abaddon black then was used for any of the straps on the Dracot and there's a few on his legs there's kind of one big one under his belly and any of the kind of I like to call it like under armor parts of models which is like in between the joints here and, and stuff like that and on the legs as well you see as well to get them covered with Abaddon black and then pretty much the go-to color for base and any metal any silver kind of colors is lead belter um, mostly on the Dracot it's like trinkets uh, with lead belts or any silver but then on Van der Hammer hand I think it was named for a second and um, his weapon the hammer uh, is a pretty prominent part so it's good to get that painted up now now the part I was kind of fearing the most was to try and get his robe white so I started off with Celestial Grey on that and um, very very thin layer of that you want to get at least two on it and then once that's dry I moved on to my fist on red with the handle of the weapon as well as the hair and the robes on the Dracot or kind of the, I call it the robes or whatever kind of cloth that part is um, and then moving on back onto the, his cloak again I went over the back part with null and oil to cover to really darken that uh, Cantor blue and then to really get into the recesses of the white part underneath I was really nervous about doing this because I didn't want to mess it up because it's kind of hard to tidy up white so very carefully I went into like the most prominent recesses part with Noddle and Oil and I got them shaded up. And then I moved on to Bane Blade Brown, I just said that slowly, and for kind of the scroll parts. Um, and then with the usual Agrax or shade over that to get those parts really shaded in really well. Um, so it'll be ready for highlighting later on or for layering later on. So then once the robe is dry, his robes, I went with Cantor Blue over the most prominent parts of the edges. 
kind of like in between a layer and a highlight and that was done on the armor as well now even so evil sun scarlet was used for the hair to really brighten that up again and uh, the most prominent parts of the edges all the way along the back especially the handle of the weapon and um, you can kind of take your time doing that get little details done and it makes that kind of bright red really has to stick out a little bit more back onto the robe again i went to ultuan gray I think this was roughly about three layers. I was really nervous about this. I hate paint and white. I don't think anyone enjoys paint and white too much. And um, so about three layers of that, really thin ones to get it to look just right. And then a Shopty bone then was used to kind of highlight uh, the most prominent parts of the scroll as well. So then I went on with Stormhole Silver to highlight a lot of his armor um, and some of the armor on the Dracod as well because this what i usually went with was like a brighter gold color but i switched to stormhole silver i've seen it I'll used a lot more and it really does make the armor stick out like sparkle you know like shine and it looks really good as well once it's done right and um, come near the end of the model then i went with caldor sky this is a paint that i've had for a long time and i've never even used so i really had to shake the guts out of this pot to get it to come out all right um, so I use it to highlight the most prominent parts on his robe and on the armor as well. And the contrast between them looks amazing. It looks really good, especially with that previous highlight of um, Cantor Blue underneath it as well. So to kind of finish up the inside of the robe then, I went with White Scar. Just on the very edges of the most prominent points of the inside of the robe to really try and get it to stick out and to not overdo the white on it and it turned out pretty good i was happy with it now for the final part of the teeth which i forgot to mention earlier the band blade brown and the adrax earthshed was used on any his two horns his teeth and his nails as well and once they were all dried i went with pallid witch flesh for the final kind of layer slash highlight to really bring those parts to life as well and here is the finished model looking back at him now I'm really happy how he turned out. Everything really did come together by the end. I think the armor especially turned out a hell of a lot better than I thought it was going to be. The skin, the skin I was a bit weary about because the cape, the skin, the armor, it's all the same color blue. It's all based with Cantor blue. But I think with the Temple Guard on top of the Cantor blue on the Dracot helps separate that a good bit. Um, the red turned out good, especially the inside of the cape, the white part. I was always kind of half afraid to do that white. I was so tempted just to change halfway through and not do a white. But I'm happy I did stick with it because it does look really good. Overall, I'm happy with how he turned out. Uh, couldn't really complain too much. But um, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I will put in the description all the paints that I used, uh, where to get them and where to get this model as well. And make sure to stay tuned for the next Battle of Fear Farrick model. It will be out next Monday at the same time. I'm going to be keeping this um, every Monday, probably about 12 o'clock every Monday. So make sure to check back then and you see your next video of the Battle of Fear Farrick. The series is only getting started. There is going to be a lot more cool models to get painted up, a lot more story to be added on as it goes along. So make sure to let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't. And once again, Hopefully you guys like this video and thanks for watching.